What is up everyone? Today we're going to be unboxing and setting up the Apple TV HD. So this is the fourth generation Apple TV from quite a few years ago. It's still a model that they currently sell. Um, they don't sell the 64 gig one anymore but this is the 32 gig. Uh, of course they've got the 4K one that they've had for a couple of years now. That's sort of the flagship one that everybody goes for. Um, but I don't have a 4K TV, so this was absolutely fine for me. Um, basically, I got some birthday money and I decided to spend it on an Apple TV because we needed a new kind of central hub for our entertainment setup. Now, I have an Apple TV second generation on the setup. It's not actually mine. It belongs to my parents. If you guys remember, like way back in 2012, I did an unboxing video for a second gen Apple TV. That was mum and dad's Apple TV that they used for a good couple of years for Netflix uh, until they bought a Roku box that they still use today. The reason they bought that was simply for the catch-up, the UK catch-up, which uh, wasn't offered on Apple TV at the time. So um, I've got the second gen on my setup and the second gen Apple TV is very old by today's standards. It doesn't get updates, doesn't get the latest apps. And um, for that reason, we've basically been using the Xbox One as our kind of media hub. Um, so Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, uh, Now TV on and off, as well as all of the usual BBC iPlayer, um, more for five on demand, all that sort of thing. Been using all of that on the Xbox One. And the Xbox One is a great piece of kit, but it's an Xbox, it's a games console. And for the longest time I've wanted a media player that is nice and quick, snappy, quiet, power efficient, and uh, slightly less problematic than the Xbox. The Xbox is great guys, don't get me wrong, but we do get the odd hiccup here and there. Um, so yeah, I decided to splurge my birthday money on the Apple TV. Oh, I've had it upside down this whole time. <laughs> on the Apple TV HD. Now, whether a new one's going to come out um, anytime soon, I've got no idea. I don't really care either because obviously the new one is probably going to be 4K only. Um, they're not going to revise the non-4K model. I highly doubt that. And I don't have a 4K TV, so this is perfect for me and hopefully it, it has support for a good couple of years. So um, at least a year ago, maybe even, well, probably over 18 months ago, we kind of cut the line with Freeview. Um, we weren't using hardly any of the channels on Freeview and we decided to just unplug the antenna and I ripped out all of the cabling and it is completely gone now. So we rely 100% on the broadband connection for our TV, like many people these days. Um, so we rely heavily on the streaming apps, the catch-up apps. And it is only very recently that the Apple TV has become a sort of complete UK solution. Um, because for the longest time, the Apple TV was missing the Channel 4 app, the All 4 catch-up app, which is essential because Channel 4 have got some of the best programs. Um, so, yeah, after I heard that they had added that as an app, um, whether it's perfect or not, it, you know, it isn't. I've seen reviews of it, but it sucks on every device. Um, it's just part of it, you know, it's something you've got to put up with, unfortunately. Um, but when I heard that news, I decided to splurge out on an Apple TV. So in this video, we are going to unbox it and um, we're also going to set it up. And something a little bit different about this video, something a little bit more unique maybe, uh, we're going to set it up alongside Logitech Harmony. Because even though this comes with one of the coolest remotes on the planet, um, we're not going to be using the remote, we're going to be using... Um, Logitech Harmony because we control everything in here with Harmony and it's just a wonderful solution. So here we go. I bought this locally today by the way. Uh, we went to Curry's PC World to try and get it and they didn't have any in stock and uh, we went around the corner to Argos and they had plenty available. Although you could only purchase one per customer which was kind of interesting. Um, so Beautiful Apple packaging, you know, just absolutely stunning. Uh, this goes up to 1080p. Obviously, the Apple TV second gen only goes up to 720p. Doesn't make much of a difference at all because I'm still in the Stone Age and I have a 720p TV. Um, I'm probably going to get a few TV-related comments. I do on every single video where I show my TV. But, you know, like I say to people all the time, my TV was free. And the best things in life are free. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave that there. Um, so here we have it, the Apple TV. 
and the remote side by side. One thing that fascinates me about this box is you tend to find over time Apple have shrunk their boxes quite considerably. This is a much bigger box than the second gen Apple TV box. The second gen a Apple TV, the box was the exact same size as the footprint of the device. It fits snugly in the top and everything else was underneath it. Um, but this box is wider because they placed the remote next to it. So let's take a look at the Apple TV first of all. Um, it sort of reminds me a little bit of kind of a hockey puck kind of thing. You know, it really does look like a solid, just black brick. There's nothing much to it really. It's kind of the same as the second gen or the third gen, just taller, um, but very, very heavy. And uh, I actually saw one in Curry's today and I was fiddling around with it. So that's why I already have like an opinion of it. I hadn't seen one in person prior to that. None of the people I know have one. None of my friends have one. It doesn't tend to be a very popular device in the UK, but I think that is going to rapidly change now that pretty much every app is on here. Um, oh, and another thing, folks, I am. Um, this is just a, a quick side note to everything I've already said. I am going to give Apple TV Plus a go, obviously, because I get a year free now that I've purchased this Apple TV, which is awesome. And I'm also going to give Apple Music a go. Around six months ago, I cancelled my subscription to Spotify Premium. Um, I just wasn't getting along with it amazingly. So I'm going to give Apple Music a whirl. I'm going to kind of like try and update all of my devices, try and get a little bit back into the 21st century in terms of things like iCloud and my sharing and streaming and whatnot i've kind of fallen behind and i don't really know what all of my devices are doing together you know my photos and everything i'm kind of i've lost track i haven't had time to really delve into it all so i'm going to go back into my true nerd back to my true nerd roots and try and figure it all out and uh, get my little apple ecosystem sorted because i'm on mac i've got an iphone you know i've got airport devices in the house and i've got an apple tv i'm just I'm pretty much full-blown Apple um, at the moment. So, yeah, I'm going to give Apple Music a whirl and see how it goes. Anyway, uh, enough rambling. I'll put timestamps at the beginning of this video, probably for those who stumble across this vid and don't know who I am, because those sorts of people understandably find it quite difficult to sit through my ramblings. So, here we have the device stripped from its outer shell, and there's another little bit of packaging here. Okay, I'll keep all of the packaging just in case folks. Uh, one thing that I really don't like is the fact that it's glossy so that'll get dirty and kind of look pretty nasty really quickly but one good thing is I now have this new TV cabinet with doors on the front so I won't be able to get direct finger marks. So, uh, lovely connectivity on the back here, folks. We have a built-in power supply. I believe it's an 11 watt power supply, I read somewhere. Um, so, no power brick, it's just a figure of eight straight in. That is absolutely gorgeous. HDMI output, 10 100 ethernet on the back, and of course, USB. Um, we're gonna be connecting via ethernet. We're just gonna do a straight swap from the current Apple TV cabling scenario. So, in the box, we have the remote. Even though we're going to use this with Harmony, I'm going to set it up using the Apple TV remote because I think it will be quicker. Oh my gosh. I used it in the shop, but man, that is stunning. That is stunning. If I didn't have Harmony, then I would be very chuffed with this remote. Oh man, gorgeous. But it's just so much easier to keep track of one remote. So we don't really need anything else. Um, we've got a power cable in there. Very, very nice the way they've done that with the UK plug taking up loads of space. Uh, and then some documentation. I assume there's some Apple stickers in there as well, but we'll leave all that exactly how it is. Still no HDMI cable included. But we're used to that sort of thing by now. Let's try and get this packaging back in. Okay, so let's do a straight swap from the old to the new Apple TV. My apologies for any dust or whatever that you guys can see. Um, I don't keep up with the dusting of this setup very well at all, but it's functional and it's not too bad. And as you guys know, I did a good job of laying everything out and doing all the cabling, so it's not like a huge mess. It's just a little bit dusty. 
um, and we've got some random cables left over from like chargers and stuff but you know that's just like day-to-day -day use of the setup so let's do a complete unplug of the three cables holding the second gen in place so obviously power HDMI and Ethernet here we go let's take a look at this guy as you can see the glossiness gets scratched up and looks disgusting so easily I mean this device is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years old. But yeah, so much lighter, so much smaller, but the footprint is the same size. So there we go. Younger brother is going straight in. And what we'll do before plugging the power in actually is we'll boot up the TV um, so that we get the intro. If there's some kind of like startup, I don't want to miss anything from the startup. I've got a feeling it's going to boot right up as soon as I plug it into power, if it's anything like the other Apple TV. So, that's sitting there. Let's just get our activity. Now, I've got a Watch Apple TV activity on my remote here, so I'm going to fire that one up. I assume that in my Logitech settings, I've got to change it from the second gen to the fourth gen Apple TV. Um, it may work as is, I'm not 100% sure but I'd rather change it just in case anyway because I think there's probably a few different functions and whatnot. Before we go any further, folks, I know this is absolutely horrific. You can't even recognize it. It is my Technics center channel. We had a couple of accidents, um, but I'm not gonna say anything about it in this video. I am halfway through creating the next part of my home entertainment setup video. Um, I've made a lot of changes to this setup that you won't be able to see in this video. It's a lot of behind the scenes stuff and a lot of stuff over the other side of the room there. Um, but it's quite exciting stuff and yeah, that video is halfway through being made. So, we've got the Apple TV plugged in. And... Hey, hey, pair your remote. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of a better central view on the TV here, folks. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good for my standards. So English. And I did give our TV screen a quick wipe. United Kingdom. Continue. Don't use Siri. There's no point because we're going to be using Harmony. Um, I'll set up manually, I think, folks. Okay, so... I'm going to say never acquire on the password there. I'm going to risk it just because entering stuff is kind of a pain. Um, I was a bit worried because, as again, I'm going to mention um, Logitech Harmony here. I was a bit worried that we'd miss out on this trackpad thing, but I've just entered my Apple ID and password. And it's it's great, but it's not it's not amazing amazing you know it's it i'll i'll be okay knowing that we haven't got it um uh, use data disable location we don't need to so it's given us the option to download a screensaver here see the world uh video update weekly and can be up to 950 meg we're going to say not now because i want to uh, put our family photos as the um screensaver so that's one of the big reasons for getting this device, actually. Hey, so here we are on the home screen of the Apple TV. And, wow, do you know, first thing that I love is it doesn't come with tons of horrible, bloaty applications everywhere. Um, just your bare essentials here. So, that is fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a little play, and then we'll get on to the remote stuff. So, I've downloaded all of the apps. You guys can see we've got all of the... Uh, basic TV, UK TV channel catch-up services, Prime Video, Netflix, uh, all of those are signed in. I've been through all of these and Netflix. The only ones I haven't touched are Now TV because we're not currently subscribed and YouTube. So they're pretty much the apps that we'll be using. Um, I really like the way that you reorder stuff. So they jiggle just like on iPhones or whatever and then you can just drop the apps down wherever I think that's really cool um, I've also tried it out it connects and it finds everything of mine which is really good finds all of my um, music 
I've pressed the wrong thing. Computers. Uh, yeah, there we go. So it finds my iTunes library, all of my music. It finds all of my films, which is great. Uh, the old one has actually got pretty unreliable with that. I'm not sure if it was like an iTunes version thing or whatever. Um, but yeah, and this is really cool as well. Like, for instance, um, Shameless is Channel 4. Uh, this documentary is Channel 5. And then It, the film, is Prime Video. I just bunged three things on when I first signed into these three services. And you can see that they all pile together in one place, which is really cool. So you go back to home and they're always there. Um, that's one feature I really like, so you can catch up with all of your stuff in one place. They're all just sitting there, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty much done setting this up. Uh, Audio-wise, it's working fine with the receiver. Uh, it sees stereo when it's in the menu, but as soon as you jump into a film or whatever, it gives out um, linear PCM, discrete multi-channel audio, which is great. Um, and it sounds really good with films. So... Yeah, um, let's set up the Logitech Harmony side of things and see how far we get with that. So here we are in the good old Logitech Harmony app. You can see my Harmony Ultimate Remote there, uh, 10 activities. So let's go and boggle with the Apple TV one. I'm guessing it should just be a case of, um, okay, first we're gonna have to add it as a device. That's okay, Apple, G, uh, Apple TV second, third generation. So we'll add device, first of all. You can do this directly on the Harmony app, but I thought we'd do it on the computer. I just prefer it this way. Um, it's kind of weird. I remember mentioning this last time with the Logitech Harmony. It basically... Uh, Apple TV. Apple TV 4K slash fourth generation. Yeah, it basically allows you to do most of the things on the desktop app, and the same with the mobile app, but there's some things on each of them that you can't do. It's really odd. Um, change made on my Harmony must be synced. Open the settings menu on your remote or Harmony app and select sync. Yeah, what we'll do is plug the remote straight in. Okay, so we've plugged the remote directly in. Let's press close. So now we should have uh, Apple TV. Uh, where are we? It's added it right at the end, is it? Apple TV. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll take out we'll take out this Apple TV. Delete this device. Delete. Because we're no longer going to be using that one. So now in activities, we've got watch Apple TV, little warning sign on it. Um change your settings. And my fans have ramped up again because this is somehow a really demanding app for some reason. So that one's fine. Okay, so it's using TV receiver, blah, 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 and we want to use Apple TV. Yeah. Uh, what input? Yeah, it's all the same. Uh, should all be the same. It's all the same. God, fans are going crazy. Right, there we have it. So if we press sync. Now, of course, if you've stumbled across this video wanting to see how you set up the Apple TV with uh, Logitech Harmony from scratch. Obviously, I just basically updated an activity that I already had. It is really easy, just like adding any other activity to Logitech Harmony. Um, and it's an IR device as well, so it works with the older Harmony remotes, which is really good. It's, even though it's got all this modern tech in it, it still receives IR from the remote, so... That's actually quite handy for compatibility. So you guys can see that we're on the Watch Apple TV little bit here. And, sorry, I've got the handle connected to my camera. You can see that it's working just fine. So you can select stuff and it's working in conjunction with controlling 
the other devices. I did actually set the Apple remote to control the receiver volume. Where have I put the Apple remote? Uh, yeah, you can choose whether it controls the TV volume or the receiver volume. I just changed it to receiver and it worked right away. So, you know, if you had a really simple setup, if you just had a TV, even a TV, a receiver and an Apple TV and you did all your stuff via Apple TV, this would be a great little remote. It'd be really nice. Um, so yeah, that is all set up with Harmony and um, we can just continue using it day to day. I've got to figure out my photos, get them synced up. There was a way that you could just browse to a folder on any machine on your network and use those photos for a screensaver on the old Apple TV. I can't find the option on this one. I think I may have to use the iCloud thing, um, but I'll delve all into that another time. Um, yeah, I'll give you guys a little update at the end of the video after we've used it for a little while. Okay, folks, it has been about a week later and we've been using the Apple TV. It's actually been a little longer, maybe about 10 days. We've been using the Apple TV for everything. Um, I've updated the software. Basically, when November the 1st came around, I wanted to sign up for the uh, free year of Apple TV Plus that I got with the Apple TV. So I went on to the Apple TV Plus thing and it was only offering me seven days for free. So I updated the Apple TV software. I didn't even think about really doing that manually because I thought it would just update it automatically. Um, but it turns out that there was quite a large system update and then it offered me the one year of Apple TV Plus and it also changed the interface quite a bit and altered a fair few things. So um, yeah, I'm now fully updated, fully up to date I should say, and uh, I'm absolutely loving it. One thing I haven't done is uh, reordered my applications into most used in the in the dock or anything here. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to use Arcade and I'm not going to use uh, the Photos thing because I finally figured out my Photos and what I needed to do. Basically, all I wanted to do with Photos on my Apple TV was use them as my screensaver. And luckily, it still allowed me to use the iTunes home sharing for the screensaver. So I just want to show you guys that really quickly. God knows what Photos are going to come up, but... Um, yeah, general screensaver, and you can see it's set to home sharing. Uh, now, within home sharing, you can see that it browses to my Mac Mini, which has iTunes open. And iTunes, within iTunes, there's a preference to tell uh, the Apple TV or to tell your your. Um, God, your iTunes library, what folders you would like to host for your Apple TV um, for home sharing. Sorry, guys, it's a bit late. My talking is a bit crap. Uh, well, it's not too late, but it's been a long day. Um, so you can select your iCloud library or your photos library or whatever the heck you want to do. But for me, I just selected my uh, share, the entire share of photos on my Synology NAS, which we have, you know, thousands of photos on. So I just tap photos there and set a screensaver, yes. And then uh, I was able to choose a nice effect for my photos. So where is that? Let's have a look. Ah yeah, so we've got um, the preview function. Let's go up to preview. Yeah, I have it set like this. I have it set to uh, these nice photo looking photos and uh, oh, Watermouth Castle absolutely brilliant place um, it's completely random I absolutely love it and what I also love about this effect is when you get a photo in the foreground the ones in the background fade to black and white which was really really cool to see uh, so I absolutely love this it's great if you just pause TV um, if you know any time after two minutes I believe I've got it set to two minutes yeah photos start coming up and what I love about this folks is you know what it's like with digital photos it's easy to let the majority of them just rot away on your hard drive it's quite hard work to be disciplined enough to print them out and put them in frames and all of that sort of thing so to have something like this it instantly gives a ton more value to all of our photos on the NAS which is great we basically order them within years and days out in those years, during those years, I should say. Um, so yeah, we've got tons and tons of family photos on there and just having them all pop up is just a real treat. So um, 
yeah, it'll show during music playback and podcasts on the music playback front and everything like that. Obviously, um, it works fantastically with my iTunes library. So if we just browse to my computer here and we go over to music, um, it can see all of my music that's on the Mac Mini. Um, again, stored on the NAS, but hosted through the Mac Mini. So technically to achieve all of this, we've got three machines. We've got the Apple TV, we've got the Mac Mini as the the host, and then uh, data storage on the NAS. So obviously it works with my TV programs as well. The TV programs that I have stored on here, not very many. And uh, the films, as you can see, I've got 140 films on uh, in my iTunes library. I haven't added to them in years and years. Uh, they've all got the artwork and stuff. It takes a minute to load up, obviously, because we're going through a few different devices, but there's no buffering or anything while while playing back. It all eventually pops up. Um, so, yeah, that's about it to really mention, folks. One thing I absolutely love, really quickly, I love all of the apps that use the default Apple TV feature set. So, um, for instance, we started watching a zombie program on ITV yesterday, and if I go up to Apple TV here, here you go. You can see up next, we have got Zomboat. That's the that's the program that we started watching, and you can see that we've got BBC iPlayer stuff here as well that the kids have been watching. So you see the little icon in the corner shows you um, exactly what app you were using. Um, so if we just go over, we've got an Amazon Prime, we were watching Lego Ninjago on Amazon Prime, and then this is from when we first booted up the system. Now, the only gripe I kind of have with this is it doesn't appear that Netflix supports this feature, which is absolutely bamboozling to me. So um, I don't know why that is. If anybody has an Apple TV and knows why it does or doesn't, or if there's a setting I need to do, because um, when I booted up ITV and I booted up like Channel 5, no, not 5, did I, did I boot up 5? It says, it's got a little dot to say that I haven't, but I swear I've watched something on 5. Anyway, regardless, um, when, I, when I booted these up, I had to give it permission to integrate fully with the Apple TV to achieve those features. So, I'm not entirely sure um, what's actually happening with Netflix or if they just don't support it. If they don't, I mean, that is seriously crap. Uh, because Netflix are a huge player, obviously. And, I mean, the reason that there's not much stuff in that list is because we watch 90% of stuff on Netflix. So, that's interesting. Uh, now TV definitely doesn't support it. I know that. I haven't even opened it yet because I don't have a subscription at the moment. As I said, we kind of duck in and out of that one. Um, so, I know that now TV doesn't support that feature. Um, and I didn't even download UK TV Play. It just sort of came down. I don't know how that arrived there. But, yeah, as you can see... We are all set up and looking good. I am having a whale of a time with the Apple TV. It is awesome. Another quick thing to mention is, um, this is the last thing, I promise. When you watch something on the iPlayer and you pause it and then you go over and you watch something or you do something, like I was flitting between iPlayer and something on the computer section, it remembers, it keeps iPlayer open. So it might even do it now. If I tap iPlayer, it might be in the exact same place where we were. Let's see. So yeah, it remembers that we were on CBBS, as you can see. So that's good. Sorry about the focus, folks. But it remembers where we were there. If I jump into Netflix... See, yeah, there we have it. We were last on Kung Fu Panda. So it remembers where you are in all of these applications all the time and the searches that you, you did to get there, which is really cool. So um, let's see if we can just use another one as an example. Does it remember up to, like, three? It does. You can see that we're halfway through searching for that Zombo program. So, yeah, that's fantastic. By the way, some of the keyboards are a bit messed up. Got a grey background and black letters. I assume that's going to be sorted soon. And I love the feature for the keyboard input on the uh, iOS devices. So when you get to a keyboard, you get a little notification on your iPhone that pops up and says, do you want to use your iPhone to type? So if you want to type something long or if you've got your phone handy, then that's quicker than using this remote. Um, 
But yeah, that is absolutely everything, folks. So thank you for watching my video on this Apple TV. It's lovely to have it in time for Christmas. It really is. It's a very nerdy treat. Um, definitely wasn't essential, but it's made things a lot easier for us. And it's definitely, as you can see, with the photos and the integration with my iTunes library. And of course, AirPlay. I can AirPlay from my phone. And, of course, use... Let's take a little look. Use the remote application. Where is it? use the remote application to play music from my iTunes via the Apple TV. Let's just do this. It's playing in the kitchen at the moment with the AirPod Express, but uh, we'll change it to living room. So obviously it'll play through the Apple TV if I select living room. Uh, I just want to show you guys my remote app is being really finicky. It's actually nowhere near as stable as it used to be back in the day, but still, um, the point still stands. I don't even have to have the TV switched on. I don't have to use the remote to browse to the computer section to play music through the Apple TV. I can do it by air playing from iTunes, which is always open on my Mac Mini, and I can do that simultaneously in the living room and the kitchen as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite teched out here with the Apple stuff and uh, really enjoying it. So uh, it's just everything that I had before, but refined, upgraded, modernized, updated. It's just better and nicer. So chuffed to bits. And I hope you guys have enjoyed my little video. It's not really a review. It's just good old IMNC ramblings. So anyway, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.